Hi, welcome to the Carver Middle School testing team presentation. Please note, you may leave your questions in the chat and a member of the staff is ready to respond. This recording is happening right now. So if you're missing it live, you'll be able to watch this at a later date and time. I'd like to introduce you to members of our team. In our chat, you'll find Ms. Benor, who is our ESOL counselor. So if you have questions, she'll be one of the folks that are gonna help you and then she'll respond to your question. We also have Ms. Barnes, our sixth grade counselor. Hi, Ms. Barnes. Hi. <laughs> we also have uh, myself, I'm Dr. Hunt, Dean of Students. And we have Mr. Harrington, our sixth grade AP, and he's also our AP over testing. Mr. Harrington. Good evening, parents and students. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our parent training for testing. Um, this year, uh, testing is different from any other year. The procedures are much different. And so tonight, we hope to clear up some of the confusion and some of the questions that you may have in regards to how we're going to um, administer our winter diagnostics testing. So please feel free to type your questions in the chat box. We're here to help you. We, are, we have someone ready to go to help you with any questions that you may have during the presentation. And again, our team is working diligently to assist you and to, and to support you so that you are very clear about how we're going to do our testing this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mr. Harrington. Okay, so with that, we're going to move on to um, the fact that at the end of this presentation, we do have Chick-fil-A giveaways. So please make sure that you complete the exit ticket that we have available to you. And this exit ticket is going to um, provide us with your child's information. They're the ones that get the Chick-fil-A um, gift card, but you are more than welcome to enjoy it. So that exit ticket information is down below and it's also already in that chat. So you could just fill that out, uh, that survey and let us know if you have any questions, concerns, we'll be happy to help you. Also on this chat, we have um, members of our ESOL team. Again, Ms. Fenor is here. Ms. Garrier will be able to assist as well. And for representing the ESC department, we have Mr. Simmons. So thank you to you all for assisting. So let's talk about the winter diagnostics. The winter diagnostics is an opportunity to check students' needs. It's going back to everything our students have started to learn in August and is giving the teachers an opportunity to see what gaps need to be filled in prior to that uh, course closing out in the spring. In the spring, we still anticipate the state exams. So whether it's language, arts, civics, science, or math, we wanna make sure early that our students, if they're having trouble in a particular part of the content that we address that. So that's what the winter diagnostics will help us to understand. So which students are going to take this exam? Please note, every student is going to take a diagnostic exam. So for example, every grade level student takes a language arts class, which means sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade students will take a language arts exam. All students take a math exam as well, except for our students that are taking accelerated math courses that count as high school credit. So our algebra students and our geometry students will not take a math exam. Our seventh grade students also take a civics exam based on what they're learning in social studies. And our eighth grade students take a science exam. In the event you have an eighth grader that did not participate in civics last year, maybe they're from outer state or what have you, they will also take a civics exam as an eighth grader. Most students will take at least one, some two, some three, and some four. So let's move on to our testing calendar. Testing is going to begin in uh, next week on Monday. So you'll notice that it begins, if this is an example, it's going to run for our brick and mortar students first. It begins on Monday, all brick and mortar students, meaning if your child is coming onto campus to take in, to learn, they are brick and mortar students, your child will be taking their exams next week. The brick and mortar students who do not have accommodations will have 90 minutes to take their exam. Students with accommodations have more time. They'll be provided an opportunity for extended time. So that's reflected here on the schedule. On Thursday and Friday, students that are absent will have an opportunity to make up the exam that they have missed. So just to review, on-campus students will take an exam. 
week of January 11th to the 15th. Sixth grade students who come on campus will be taking a paper-based exam for math and language arts. Our seventh grade tests, which are math, language, arts, and civics, will be computer-based tests, and they will take that here at school. And our classes will be socially distanced, which means that we will ensure that we have at least six feet apart. We'll use all COVID protocols to make sure that all children are safe in the testing and learning environment. So let's move on to the following week. Many of our students are learning from home and on weeks of the week two of January 19th through the 22nd, you'll notice that we have a school holiday. There's no school on Monday, January 18th. We have four days of testing that week for our virtual students. We begin with language arts, which means all of our virtual students will be testing Tuesday, January the 19th. The following day, Wednesday, January 20th, all students that have a math, a math sorry, a math class that is not an algebra or geometry class will be taking a test if they're a virtual learner. The following day, seventh grade students only that are learning from home will take their civics exams. And the following day, only eighth grade students, they'll take their science exams. Now, keep in mind that science, eighth grade science is normally a paper-based test. If your child is coming to school to take their test, then they're going to take a paper-based test, meaning a booklet, piece of paper, and they're going to bubble in answers. If your child is taking their exam from home, and that is an option afforded to all parents and all families, then your child is going to take the same test at home on the computer. So let's review that one more time for clarity. So our online exams are for our, our online exams for our distance learners will occur week two, January 19th to the 22nd. Students who will be provided on their digital test ticket a code for them to see uh, where they're to report online. So although they're taking it online from home, they're still going to go into a Google Meet environment in the event that they need help. Those tests will be released to the students based on that information. Students are going to join with that Google Meet and once they do, that exam will be released, directions will be read, and support will be provided by the teachers. Students with accommodations, meaning a student with extended time, ESC, ELL, or 504, they'll have an opportunity to use a Google Meet function called raise your hand. They'll click on a button to alert the teacher that they will need support. And then they also can privately ask that question in a breakout room environment. And at that point, the teacher will be able to provide them support without disturbing what's going on with the rest of the class at that time. So that's our week two is for our virtual learner students. Okay, moving on to our following week. Our last week of testing is week three. Now, the district provided a uh, number two other options for our students. If you are a student that would prefer to take your test at home paper-based, you may pick up your exam at school, and then we will give it to you, and then you take your paper-based exam at home, and you return it back to us. So you'll notice that on January the 25th, it says pick up paper-based exams for applicable students. We sent out a test option survey for those that completed the survey, then you let us know that that's the option you want and we're preparing those materials for you for your pickup and you'll receive information as to when you're going to pick that up. Additionally, some families realize that for their child, it was a better learning environment. Although they want to continue to learn from home, they wanted their child to test at school. So we had several parents that opted into that option. So for those students that will do so, you'll notice that on this calendar, it shows you that on Tuesday, January the 26th, our students are going to take both their language arts and math tests. The following day, if you have a seventh grade student, they will come back for a second day to take civics, or if you have an eighth grade student, they will come back to take science. Please note that your child will again be in a socially distant environment offset from the rest of the students, so they will be safe and we will follow all COVID protocol procedures. Our students will be distant at least six feet apart in a small um, base group room. And if you have students with flexible time and extended time, you'll notice that below it shows you that they have that 180 minutes because these are 90 minute exams. So to review, our week three are for the option of students that are virtual learners who either want to take a paper-based test from um, at home, so they'll pick up the test from school, complete it, and then drop it back off to us on campus. 
The other option are the students that are virtual learners who do not want to take the test online at home would prefer to come into school to take that exam, either online or with a paper-based test. If your child is coming in on that day, they still must dress in school uniform. They will have to stay here the entire day, but we will also ensure that bus transportation will be provided. So if you have shared that information with us on that test option survey that we sent out in December, then we are securing bus transportation if that is a need for your family. Robert J. Meehan says that every child has a different learning style and pace. Each child is unique, not only capable of learning, but also capable of succeeding. So to that end, let's talk about how we set up our children for success. So the term accommodations may be used to describe how we alter the testing environment, how we alter the curriculum format or the equipment that is provided to allow individual students access to the content and the assigned tasks. So that means we're not changing the curriculum, but we are making it accessible to our students. We have three different groups that fall into this accommodations category. One is our 504 students. We also have ESOL students and ESC students. So let's take a look at our ESOL environment. A student can be an ESOL student and have different areas of eligibility. Our students that have ESOL LY eligibility are provided accommodations. Those students may have extended time, meaning a 90 minute test, they may have 180 minutes to complete that exam. They may also have use of a heritage language glossary, as well as a heritage language um, instructor that will help to support in case they have a question within that testing environment. Our ESC students are provided an IEP, meaning an individualized learning program, and that will help us to determine what needs they may have in order to be successful. Those individual needs may include having flexible seating, extended time, one-on-one -on -one testing, paper-based. There is a slew of different accommodations. Those accommodations were already established in the beginning of the year. If you're unsure of whether your child has accommodations, you can reach out to us. And again, in the chat, we do have Mr. Simmons, who's representing ESC, and Ms. Funor is representing ESOL, and they will be able to support and field those questions for you. So how, do you, how does your child know where to report for their exam? We're providing every child a digital test ticket. The digital test ticket will show the students in the form of a calendar, either their physical room location for our week one students who are brick and mortar who are coming into the school to take their exam, or our week two students who are going to join a Google Meet. So within the calendar, within the calendar date, it will show you either a room assignment or a Google Meet code. So they'll know their time of uh, test, the test they're taking, as well as the location of their exam. Those tickets were sent out today, January 7th, via their student email account. So families, you may go in at this juncture and check your child's student email, and you should see a very similar digital test ticket. Tomorrow, our period three teachers will pause to review this sample, sorry, their digital test ticket. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you'll notice that we were going to meet yesterday, but we pushed that into today. So we did a little revision on our calendar, but definitely tomorrow on Friday the 8th, our teachers are going to support your child by having them check their digital test ticket. This student, Bayard Rustin, on Monday is going to take an ELA exam in room 8105 with Madame Anand at 9.30 a.m. The following day, Bayard is going to report to take his math exam on January 12th, again in 8105 with Madame Anand. You'll notice that all other dates on this calendar says report to your class. That means that Bayard only is going to take two exams, one on Monday and one on Tuesday, both in the morning. Because these are 90 minute exams and Bayard is a sixth grade student, he's actually going to miss just periods one and two during the day and will go back to his classes for the remainder of the day. So what, how do you know, how does the child know and how does their regular teacher know whether the student is taking a test? Well, we've set up a structure at Carver Middle School to account for this. It's our attendance um, structure for testing. So we have an attendance clerk, Ms. Breyer, who is awesome. 
And she's going to mark our students school related in CIS so that when you go in, you'll see that your child has a uh, time blocked off for their testing. If your child is absent from taking their test at the scheduled time, that school related code will be changed to absent. And that will alert us as a testing team to make sure that you're provided an opportunity to make up your, your test. If a student does not make up their test within um, by the time the testing window closes, unfortunately, they lose the opportunity to have that um, test data available to us so that we can help close those gaps. So please make sure that your child is present every day for their learning and also for days that we have testing. At this juncture, I'd like to bring forward um, back to uh, our stream, Ms. Barnes. Hi, Ms. Barnes. Hi. Hi. Ms. Barnes is going to review for us some test taking strategies as well as some information and as it pertains to the needs if you're taking your test at home um, for a winter diagnostic. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. We are excited to give you information about the winter diagnostics, test taking strategies, know where and when you will test, review class notes, practice tests, get a good night's sleep, and have a great breakfast. In addition, I am encouraging all students to be prepared. That means the night before the exam, please make sure you have all of the necessary instruments or documents you will need to test. That means if you need a number two pencil, you need a designated work area, well lit work area. So you're going to need two number two pencils. If you need a calculator, if your test calls for that and scratch paper to work out any language arts, um, questions or problems, math, same. So what we want you to do is to make sure that you're prepared. As Dr. Hunt has previously, previously stated, please dress appropriately. That means you're going to get up early. You're going to be prepared. You will be dressed um, and ready to work. So you will be on time for your test meaning you, if you are going to be on the campus, you're going to be assigned a room and you will be in your location on time. If you are going to be working from home, we are encouraging parents to please make sure your students are aware the time of their test. They should be prepared to log into their Google Classrooms in order to start promptly at 9.30. All instructions will be start um, teachers will begin reading their instructions at 9.30. The test will begin in the morning at 9.45. Now, if you are a student that will be taking an exam in the afternoon, what you're going to do is, again, be prepared. You want to be early. You want to make sure that you are ready to go in the afternoon. What you need to do is you need to do your best. Your teachers have worked hard. You've worked hard. So we want to see what you've learned over these periods of weeks. So be mindful to make sure to do your best. This is a timed test. That means that you are going to be only allotted 90 minutes to take the test unless you have special accommodations. And for those students that have accommodations, they've already been made aware of that. So they know exactly what to do. If you do not have accommodations, it is a 90 minute test. That means if you're working in school, the teachers will tell you when to begin and when to end. If you're working from home and you're working virtually, your parents are going to help you um, manage your time. They are going to make sure that you use that 90 minutes, use it properly. Do not um, waste the time because you're not going to have another opportunity. There are so many questions that you need to cover within that amount of time. We know that you can do it. We want you to do your best. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. And uh, Ms. Barnes, could you also share the opportunities for aftercare and virtual tutorial as well? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Would love to talk about aftercare, morning care and aftercare. Okay, parents, students, we still have openings in the morning program in order for students that need assistance. So parents, we encourage you, please go into SIS. Report cards have already come out. 
progress reports will be coming out within the next couple of weeks. You will be able to see if your students need assistance. Now, if you're like me, most children tell us, oh, I don't have anything to do. I don't have any homework. I don't have anything to cover. However, mom, dad, when you look at SIS, you have the ability to see what is going on in each one of your students' classrooms. That means teachers are posting grades. They are letting you know which assignments are due, which assignments have, been, have not been completed. And in many cases, teachers are giving students an extra opportunity to make up and resubmit work. So morning care allows you to work on any skills that you need assistance with, same as aftercare. Morning care starts at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8.45. Aftercare is Monday through Thursday from 4.05 until 5.45. Now, for students that are going to be with us in the afternoon, we do provide transportation parents. So we do have buses available for students that need um, transportation home. We're encouraging all students to help us. Um, we want to be there. We're there to help you. So please join the morning care in the afternoon. Or um, we also have tutorial uh, available for that's run by Ms. Brown, our eighth grade assistant principal. She has put out some information in parents in all the Google classrooms. There is a form. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot. I omitted. There is a registration form for morning care and aftercare. Um, that is also within my Google classroom. Ms. Brown has posted tutorial for students that need assistance that maybe are not able to join us in the morning or in the afternoon, but it is offered virtually for students that are at home as well and you are able to go into Google Classrooms. Your students have received this information. They should have also received an email from Ms. Brown. So we are here to help you. We're here to make sure you're successful. Please take advantage of these opportunities. Thank you. Ms. Barris, thank you so much. Um, before I bring on Mr. Harrington again, you'll notice that on this sheet, and I apologize if I'm reiterating, but on the left-hand side, it shows a folder. We will be sending out Aside from the digital test tickets that you received today in your email, tomorrow you will also receive an email that will help parents with support material. They include videos and information if your child is taking a test at home, how you can monitor that process. Please be mindful. For example, a calculator is only allowable for our seventh and eighth grade students. So parents, make sure that you remove that from the home or you make sure that you're monitoring your child. So if they're taking the sixth grade test, they're not using a calculator to complete their math uh, exam for that day. Um, Mr. Harrington, we brought you back because we also have an opportunity for our students that want to return to school. We had to make your choice, but then there's another uh, important piece to that as well. So if you could please share. Sure. Thank you. So um, just to piggyback on some of the things that Ms. Barnes said, we're very interested in making sure that your students are doing very well academically as well as socially. Um, we've been we've been we've identified 62 students who are currently um, in virtual or remote learning that the district has identified those students as probably being more beneficial of coming back to school. They have since sent you an email or your in your student's email account or your email account, letting you know that their student is not doing so well in a remote environment. And sometimes remote environments are not very good for, for everyone. It doesn't work out for everyone. So some people may benefit better being on campus. We will all, our guidance counselors will also be calling those 62 students that have been identified and letting them know that they have been identified because of their um, need for more support and that support can be given to them on campus. So don't be alarmed if you should get a phone call from one of our counselors within the next couple of weeks to let you know that, it, that we're going to request that you consider bringing your child back to campus. Also, if you have not received a phone call, but you would like for your student to come on campus, you'll be, you should just send us an email. There is a waiver that your child that you would have to fill out to give you to give your child access to come back on campus. That's usually done within a 24 hour period. And then our data processor, Ms. Mateo, will give you will give you notification that you are allowed to bring your, your son or your daughter back on campus if you would like for them to come back on campus for um, for their educational 
um, activities instead of doing it online. So there's many options. We're here to support you as much as possible. And again, if you have any questions, just feel free to give us a call or, or give us an email. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. And we definitely want you all to know that your child safety is definitely paramount to us. So we do follow all those COVID protocols, making sure that we are socially distanced in all of our learning environments and that we are also making sure that you know we keep to that certain number of students within a, a learning space. So, and we do make sure we have holding rooms in the event we reach that capacity in any particular room. So your child will be safe coming back on the campus and I reiterate Mr. Harrington's words, for some uh, parents and for some students, it is the best option for them. So thank you for that. Um, so with that, um, as we close, there is a survey and we're going to give away uh, Chick-fil-A cards to some families based on the survey. There are just three easy questions and I believe one of them is what's the name of your child? So if you could please go to that survey, it is in the chat and complete that for us. It'll give us an opportunity to figure out what your needs may be. Uh, and if you have any other uh, areas of support, please let us know because we are more than happy to help. So with that, thank you to our testing team that joined us today, to all of our staff members that are either in the chat or online, and also to all of your fam all the families out there who are doing a wonderful job raising your children. We adore them and we thank you for entrusting them in our care. Thank you and have a good night. <laughs>